was a great inspirational leader. She rallied hundreds of thousands of women. Susan B. Anthony changed the course of history for women in the United States. At the beginning of her career, of her dedication to women's rights, she was much despised. Her arrest for voting in the 1872 presidential election and eventual trial paved the way for women's political rights. One of the things she brought to the women's movement was a tremendous faith. Susan B. Anthony was born in 1820 in Adams, Massachusetts. She was from a tight-knit Quaker family who believed in education. In the Quaker meeting house, men and women spoke equally. And so Susan B. Anthony thought that that's the way it was everywhere. The reality was most women were uneducated, could not own property, had few legal rights, and were subservient to men. And Susan B. Anthony wanted equal rights under the law for both sexes. Anthony met Elizabeth Cady Stanton, the architect of the first women's rights convention in Seneca Falls, New York, and the duo teamed up. They were responsible for every right we have as women today. Stanton had that sort of intellectual vision. She had the way with words. And Anthony had from the beginning the vision of what it meant to build a movement. It was 1872 that Anthony caused a national sensation when she voted in a presidential election illegally. On November 1st, 1872, Anthony left her house on 17 Madison Street with her three sisters and walked to the local barber shop where, as usual, eligible men were being registered to vote. She demanded to be registered herself. She insisted that since she was a U.S. citizen, she had the right to vote under the 14th Amendment. Anthony's goal was simple, to force a case before the Supreme Court that would decide once and for all if the 14th Amendment should extend to women. Early in the morning on November 5th, Susan B. Anthony and her followers went to the polls and voted. The incident quickly escalated into a national sensation. Anthony and her followers in Rochester were jailed and charged with voting illegally. Released on $1,000 bail, Susan B. Anthony was brought to trial on June 17, 1873 at the Village Courthouse in Canandaigua, New York. Her trial was such a travesty of justice that um, it's really unbelievable when you consider that it was Susan B. Anthony who was very well known across the country already. There was a former president of the United States in the courtroom, uh, Millard Fillmore, and uh, there were congressmen. But anyway, uh, even though this was a situation of these very important people in the courtroom and the eyes of the country on the courtroom, still Susan B. Anthony was not allowed to speak in her own defense. Judge Hunt boomed out his verdict. The sentence of the court is that you pay a fine of $100 and the costs of prosecution, or serve 10 days in jail. Madam, the court will not order you to stand committed until the fine is paid. The statement was as illogical as it was contradictory. Hunt was threatening Anthony with jail only if she obeyed his ruling. However, there was a well thought out plan behind his actions. If he had ordered Anthony to be imprisoned until the fine was paid, she could have immediately appealed his decision to the Supreme Court. Now that option was far more difficult. Although Anthony was free, she had effectively lost any reasonable opportunity to bring a landmark case before the highest court in the land. The trial was rigged. Her vote didn't count, but she got great publicity value out of it. Anthony was fined $100, which she never paid. She did, however, continue to spread the word on women's rights throughout the U.S. and Europe. She appeared in front of every Congress from 1869 until 1906, the year she died. Women were finally given the right to vote in 1920, 16 years after Susan B. Anthony died. I think that every February 15th, women in this country should recognize that as Susan B. Anthony's birthday and just for a second, say thank you.